So the first question is, how is 100 Voices funded? And that's from Grand Prairie. And the second question talks about the budget. So really, I'll, I'll treat those as the same question. And that second question was from Lethbridge. So 100 Voices is uh, it's, uh, funded through uh, primarily Alberta education. It's funded in the same way that a kindergarten program is funded. Uh, children uh, who are four years of age who um, can access severe funding or mild moderate funding or ELL funding uh, can access basic grant plus whatever funds happen to go with uh, that special um, ed component or the ELL uh, funding. So that's primarily where our funding comes from for 100 Voices. We do open up the program though to any child. So we do have some typically developing children in the program. Uh, since uh, pre-kindergarten does not have universal funding, which we sure would love to have. Uh, where's the minister now? <laughs> Anyway, since we don't currently have universal pre-kindergarten funding, we do have a private tuition for families that uh, cannot access the educational grants, uh, but that do want to participate in the program. We are also very fortunate to have uh, a gentleman who is a private sponsor, and actually for six of our communities that are in kind of higher needs areas, he, he pays the, uh, the basic grant for kids that can't actually access the educational grant. We do a mass amount of screening in the springtime, so parents who are interested in coming into a pre-kindergarten program but aren't sure whether or not their kids actually qualify, we do screen uh, using our speech language pathologists and occupational therapists primarily. So that's sort of how the budget works. As far as the costs of the program, there's a certified teacher, there's an early learning facilitator, uh, there's an educational assistant, and of course all the services uh, of the multidisciplinary team. Multidisciplinary team it runs around $35,000 per uh, class, which is a half day. Then of course you've got your certified teacher, which is roughly $45,000. You have your early learning facilitator, which is roughly $20,000, and your educational assistant, which is roughly the same. Plus of course classroom resources and, 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 resource and paper and paint and everything else. So that's it in a real quick nutshell. Thanks, Corinne. Um, Barb, do you want to take that next question? Sure. Can you hear me? I don't know if I have to hold it or if I can leave it. Can you hear me? No. 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 Here, use mine. Thank you. We learn to share well. The question is um, family-based programming. How do we get parents here? And it is from Lethbridge. So I'm interpreting the question as how do you get parents out to family-based programming. And um, I would say there's three things that uh, we really look at. One is parents will only come if it matters to them. And it goes back to the consultation versus coaching kind of perspective. So if we as the experts say, these are great topics, come, they don't come. So we've learned that we need to ask families what they need and what their interests are and ground it in where families are at so that we actually start where families are at. The other thing we know, and we've learned this in research and actually just you know, bite the bullet to do it because the research is pretty clear, we need childcare for families to attend. We need to remove the other barriers. So childcare is a barrier, uh, meals are a barrier, daytime hours are a barrier. So many of our uh, parent groups and um, workshops are also offered on Saturdays and evenings. And when it is daytime, we always provide childcare and we always provide a meal, so or at least good food. So um, those are some real things that really help. But I think the biggest critical thing is that it has to be meaningful to families and in the context of their family life and family experiences. Hope that helps. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there that, can you take this one about the Parent Power Program? Um, how can we find out more about the Parent Power Program? We've been asked so often and we're very close to uh, probably putting the manual on our website. Um, it was funded in partnership through um, Alberta Education through our PAF funding and um, specialized services through FSCD. And uh, Krista Wennerstrom is our speech language pathologist who developed the um, the content manual and we're in the process of developing a facilitator's guide so that anyone can pick it up. We've always co-facilitated to build our own capacity so she's been the lead and we've had an occupational therapist, uh, early childhood teacher, physical therapist or others who co-facilitated to build our capacity across 
parent power, um, but our hope is uh, to have the manuals available because we just would love um, it to get out there. It's a wonderful resource and we just want to put in some good adult education practice facilitator principles in there to, to guide others. Right. Barb, could you just take the question from Edmonton? That's just right below that on the survey. And then oh, we'll turn the it grit over to survey for parents. Yeah. Um, I would be happy Great. to send out our five or six questions that we've developed, um, and you can use it as a tool. So you can certainly email me if you would like a copy of it. Um, what we did is we went back to the messages that we tell families. So when we tell families that they'll feel more skilled and confident in their parent-child interactions, uh, they'll feel stronger in advocating for their child's future, that they'll be engaged in decision making and making informed decision making. Um, so we actually took the five or six things that we tell families will do and we ask those harder questions and we ask them every year. So um, it's been simple in that it's six and it was very very insightful in terms of the family's perceptions of um, their experience and, and that's been valuable information for us. Okay. Uh, Corinne is going to take the last question uh, that comes from, I believe, Lethbridge. Yes. Yes. Okay. The question is, uh, why do you forbid pull out for speech? And I'm assuming that's speech and language. Uh, well, you know, it's been a journey and it is truly a philosophical change. Uh, back in the old days when I was a classroom teacher, uh, that speech path would come knocking on my door and they'd say we need to take Johnny out to do speech and language because he has a severe speech delay. And I'd be like, great, therapist is coming, taking the child, not my problem. So my hands were clean of that issue. Uh, was there any carryover into the classroom? No. Uh, did I really understand what his challenges were as a teacher? No. Did the family? No. Uh, and was it functional based? Was it educational based? No. It was very therapeutic. So we need to remember that when we're in education, our dollars are funded through education. So we very much need to focus and emphasize the functional context. What are the challenges with language in the classroom? Uh, which, is, which is very, very important. And how are we going to deal with them in the classroom? And uh, it's very important that we work with children within the context of, of what they're living in and where they're at. Otherwise, the carryover really is very, very poor. So we can learn so much from our specialists, from our speech language pathologists, from our occupational therapists. We do not need to have them pulling children out, taking them down the hall to another classroom or the custodian's closet where we can't see the work that they do because they have so many gifts to share to develop capacity with the teacher in the classroom and the assistants to model and to work with kids right where they are because that's where the greatest impact will be as far as working with whatever need that child has. So that's why we do not permit it. There is an exception and that's for children with fluency where we do have a speech therapist do a very formal program for those kids that have some real issues with stuttering and so on. And that's very much working with the family as well. So that would be the, the, the exception that comes to mind. And that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Corinne and, and Barb.